big rally for the Palestinians in Chicago yesterday. Yep, the second one since the war began. And uh, the Chicago Press Corps uh, dutifully provided the one-sided coverage it normally does. Abdullah El Aga, who uh, lost ten, 10 family members in, allegedly, 10 family members in the uh, response to the terrorist attacks from Israel, said this. Gaza has been under total a, t- a total land, air, and sea blockade for over two decades now. You, you can't expect to subjugate people and brutalize them without them eventually being sick of it and doing something about it. Uh, the subjugation and brutalization of the Palestinians, that was the tenor of the coverage. The rally organizer, uh, a man named Mohammed Sankari from the Palestinian Community Network, uh, offered this. Sankari says his wife's family lives in the West Bank. Everybody is uh, living in, you know, for years now, actually, they've been living in fear of the rampage of white European settlers who have gone out on an almost weekly basis, killed people, burned people in their homes, burned people in their cars with impunity. Uh, He has demands. We want the Palestinians to achieve their right to national liberation and self-determination. We want rights for our people. We want an end to the current massacre. And we want an end to unconditional U.S. aid to Israel. Uh, this is, so these are the muddying okay. of, uh, the, this is the muddying of the waters that's being done by, uh, well, the left in this country and amplified by the leftist press corps in this country. For, for more on this, because I just want a response on the merits of what they're saying as we were going through yesterday. Again, you have to continue to respond to the allegations they're making. So the allegation is clearly that this is just built up over time. This is a response to uh, the atrocities of Israel, the subjugation, the brutalization. And if you don't do something about it, at some point it just overflows. And that's what, that's their characterization of what occurred. They're trying to justify Hamas's actions. That's what they're trying to do. And they're trying to persuade the public, both having not one, but now two, protests it's just saying that they're the Uh, victims uh, hamas uh explain what they did senior hamas official named ali baraka did an interview on russia today of course he did russia today this is what he said among other things in the past couple years hamas adopted a rational approach it did not go into any war and did not join the islamic jihad in its recent battle We made them think that Hamas was busy with governing Gaza and it wanted to focus on the two and a half million Palestinians there and had its abandoned the resistance altogether. All the while, under the table, Hamas was preparing for the big attack. Mm -hmm. That's what Hamas is telling Russia today, bragging about it, really, is what they're doing. So um, as the Wall Street Journal editorial board opined, there you have it. Hamas presented the illusion it cared about Palestinians in order to dupe Israel into putting its guard down uh, so they could pursue their main ambition, which is to kill as many Jews as possible. Uh, Well, there's your disclosure, and it sort of runs right into the assertions that are being made by these uh, sort of leftist community organizers of Palestinian extraction in places like Chicago and New York and elsewhere, doesn't it? It also undermines this idea that subjugation, a brutalization, self-determination. Um, we pretended we were governing. So that must mean they were credible to the residents of Gaza that this was a part, at least part of the governance structure there, right? Otherwise, how could you sell that we were governing? Caroline Glick is a senior contributing editor at Jewish News Syndicate. She's the host of the Caroline Glick Show on JNS and columnist for Newsweek. Caroline, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. So um, your response to um, sort of the, the comments you heard from some of these rally organizers in Chicago, which of course are are um, uh, not, uh, not uh, new to you and, and they are part of what is being uh, provided in response to the terrorist attack. Well, no, I mean, uh, what can I say? Unfortunately, uh, in Chicago, you have people who support uh, the beheading of babies. Uh, you have people who support 
the mass rape and brutalization of women, of children, uh, the torture of families, burning alive of victims uh, just because they're Jewish. They support that. They think that that's totally justified, and they probably are happy about it. I mean, I saw a lot of uh, a lot of these protests in the United States. There was one that was on Twitter yesterday from University of Wisconsin Madison. Yep. People praising murders. Uh, you know that this uh, this is fantastic. It's, it's it's troubling to me that uh, you know all these years after 9/11, the United States uh, has enabled these jihadists to seed inside of the United States and empower them. They can even organize as student organizations at some of America's top universities. And uh, openly and uh, without any embarrassment, uh, support genocide. And not just genocide, you know, I was thinking about uh, a lot of people have made the comparison between uh, what we suffered on Saturday at the hands of Hamas, which uh, President Biden rightly referred to last night as worse than, worse than ISIS, uh, and, and what happened on 9 11. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and I think in, in certain ways, uh, what happened on Saturday? I mean, it was it, I would it, it was worse than what happened on 9/11 for for in, in terms of the brutality because what we saw here was pure barbarism that that you couldn't see in the frames in 9/11. You didn't see the faces of the uh, of the jihadist butchers who drove the planes into the World Trade Center. You didn't see their ecstasy as they murdered thousands when they were driving them in. But here we actually. Uh, we saw it. Um, they they uh, they killed their victims uh, face to face. They 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 reveled in it. They were so happy while they were while they were while they were torturing people. They've been bragging about it on social media, and, and so it's a different sort of it's a different sort of event uh, in that sense. That it's raw, it's real, and and, it, and of course. Um, like September 11th happened in Washington and, and New York, uh, this happened uh, inside of inside of Sovereign Israel, and uh, it broke up a lot of delusions here uh, for a lot of people that uh, you could just build a fence and uh, and be safe from from a jihadist regime that indoctrinates its people to have a completely separate, totally different set of values uh, than than we we are accustomed to as. as as human beings, they they worship death, and uh, they they love death. Uh, mothers whose uh, whose uh, whose sons were involved in the slaughter and were killed, uh, they were celebrating. They were passing out sweets because they believe that uh, their sons are now going to be uh, saints and uh, have a wonderful time in in uh, in heaven with Allah. And this is their belief system. They want death. They worship death. And well, we can't really understand that. You know? No, and I, in the places like New York, New York Times, they're not calling Hamas terrorists; they're calling them gunmen, and they're not trying to hide their war crimes by taking victim cell phones, recording the brutal torture, and then publishing it on social media. But I wanted to get your reaction to the Black Lives chapters around the country that are supporting this terrorist attack. Did you see that coming? Again, uh, you know, I didn't see it coming. I wasn't really thinking about Black Lives Matter. That's your problem. But, you know, we have other problems here in Israel. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as, as somebody who grew up in Chicago uh, and has a lot of family in the city, it, it, it's uh, it's terrifying because you have a hate group that openly supports annihilation of Jewish people, among other things. And it's supported, it's financed, uh, it's enjoyed hundreds of millions of, you know, uh, of donations from America's top CEOs, from the top uh, Fortune 500 companies, everybody, and, and the Jewish community in, in Chicago actively supported them, thinking that they were supporting, yeah. I don't know, Martin Luther King or something, and they're a hate group. They're, they're a genocidal anti-Semitic group, they're very much along the lines of the Nation of Islam, by the way, whose uh, who's leader, Louis Farrakhan, uh, called Jews, uh, Jews of the Judaism a better religion, and has said repeatedly that he thinks that Hitler was right, and his only mistake was that he didn't finish the job. So, I mean, you're talking about people who have, whether it's the Palestinian-American groups that are, that are celebrating Hamas and attacking Israel now, uh, while we're trying to uh, eradicate this barbarism so that we can 
live with that fear that this will ever happen again. Uh, you know, these people have been in, emboldened and enabled and facilitated by 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 Americans who who like Israel. You know, we thought that we could just build a big fence and 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 protect ourselves from this. And you guys thought that you know there's no difference between good and evil, and that everything is relative, and that uh, you know everybody's entitled to his own opinion, and you don't want to offend anybody. And racism is bad, which everybody knows, but it's become this guiding thing. You're not allowed to call out evil because you're afraid that they'll call you racist. Uh, you know, this is this is something that's happened here, and uh, we've had over 1,300 people butchered as a result on Saturday, and we're going into the largest war probably. We certainly have the largest mobilization of our forces that we've ever had uh, that uh, we have to win in order to survive. This is a do-or-die moment for Israel, and... Uh, you know, if you don't put your house in order as well, uh, like we are, and recognize that there's a very big distinction between good and evil, and and side with good and be good, and take serious action against evil to 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 not only uh, you know uh, 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 stay away from it but defeat it. You know, you you may very well face what we're facing. That's the face of jihad and its enablers. The um, uh, author, Ashley Rinsberg, takes up this uh, 9-11 comparison that's being bandied about. And she says uh, it's more like our October, uh, it's more like our Dunkirk, October 7th, more like our Dunkirk. Um, the reason the 9-11 metaphor falls is, is simple. Israel is in America. The attack on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon was isolated in time. The U.S. had total freedom to maneuver. It could have simply sat out the fight. Israel has no such luxury, neither in geography nor in time. Can the country take a wait and watch approach? Um, is it is it better? Is that is she right? Is it, it more like your Dunkirk moment? Israel's Dunkirk moment, not nine eleven. I don't know. I mean, you know, analogies are what they are. This is just another chapter in the endless war against the Jews. And you know, we thought a lot of Israelis that um, that Israel was going to. Uh, uh, enable us to avoid the fate of the Jews. That as a as a nation state, that uh, people would look at us and and uh, and see that we're just a normal people and leave us alone. And and what we find is that the endurance of the hatred of our people is uh, something that's almost supernatural. That it doesn't matter what you do. Um, and the unique there is a unique aspect to 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 the hatred of Jews. And I think. In, in many ways over time, in every era of human history, because we've been around for so many years, uh, the fate of humanity at the end of the day is determined by how people view Jews and their haters, and people who understand that, uh, you know, standing with the Jews is the right thing to do, endure and prosper, and those who think that, uh, you know, we had it coming this genocide thing makes sense, like the people in, in the protests in Chicago are claiming, you know, they go a different way, and, and their fate is generally sealed in that direction. Can you uh, uh, explain or uh, the, the um, misunderstanding from those who sort of blithely go along in saying, well, I'm just for Palestinian self-determination, um, I'm for, you know, ending, well, you, you heard it there, the subjugation of the Palestinians in Gaza. Can you just provide uh, the uh, sort of the reality of that situation? Right. So, you know, uh, Gaza has been sovereign since 2005 when Israel withdrew and evacuated all of its uh, communities from Gaza. They expelled 10,000 Israeli civilians from their homes and, uh, and left. And the idea... I, I opposed it at the time, as did most Israelis, but it, whatever, we had a certain uh, political uh, reality. And uh, at any rate, the idea was that when left to their own, uh, um, when left on the, their own, the Palestinians would take the opportunity since they say they want to stay, and they would build something that is flourishing and, and wonderful, and instead... Uh, they built Afghanistan, and and, um, and that's what we've been facing ever since. And you know, the the, the whole claim that Israel, you know, is besieging Gaza or that it's an open air concentration camp, I think is what they say. It's just an utter lie, and it gets tiresome having to talk about it all the time. But you know, under 
Now, we have, but they are a terrorist organization. They are a jihadist organization. They are controlled by Iran and Qatar. And uh, every single, you know, uh, 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 pound of concrete that goes into Gaza goes not to building uh, uh, buildings and, and schools and factories. It goes to building... Uh, it goes to build a uh, basis of operation against Israel, um, uh, missiles, mortars, rockets, everything. And that's what they do with the money. And that's what they do with the supplies. You know, the Americans are giving them money and, and, and to rebuild. And, you know, they built a town. They built a mock-up Israeli village to practice what they did on. You know, it would be interesting to know if USAID funds that went to Gaza for reconstruction were used to build the mock-up Israeli village that they used to practice what they did on Saturday. That would be really uh, interesting I mean, to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, would be a, it would be an interesting thing to check out because the United States gave the Palestinian Authority a half a billion dollars a year, you know, since Biden reinstated USAID. And, you know, the, this idea that they're under occupation is just a lie. You know, yeah, we blockaded the coast because they're a terrorist organization. By the way, under international law, we're required to do so, but... You know, whatever. They also have the Palestinian Authority that everybody supports and pretends is moderate. Uh, Secretary of State Blinken is planning on going uh, to yeah. Jordan tomorrow. He just landed in Israel today and is meeting with the Prime Minister. And uh, he's going to meet with PLO Chief Palestinian Authority Leader Mahmoud Abbas. I don't know what he's going to say to him because all Abbas has been doing since Saturday, all the his Fatah group uh, has been doing since Saturday, all that the Palestinian Authority has been doing since Saturday is glorifying Hamas and standing with them. The Palestinian Authority itself, the PLO, are acting as Hamas's foreign ministry. You know, the, the, the PLO ambassador at the UN yesterday accused Israel of genocide. You know, so like this is this is what's happening with a with a vaunted Palestinian Authority that everybody's supposed to support. And basically, it's like. You know, you have Nazi A and Nazi B, and, and you're saying Nazi B is worse than ISIS, but Nazi A, you've got to give a state to? I mean, it just doesn't work. So can I don't know what's yeah. going to happen at the end, but, you know, we can't, you know, the idea of a two-state solution, I mean, I, I, I've been writing against it forever, but I think it, it, it basically just died. What about this Friday? I mean, you have the founding member and the former leader of Hamas, he said that he's calling for a day of sacrifice, heroism, and dedication to jihad. Are you concerned with this message that he sent out for this Friday? Yes, I am. You know, you have a lot of, uh, they've been trying to get the Arab Israelis involved with this as well. You know, we're an integrated society. Arab Israelis make up uh, 20% of Israel's population, and, you know, they're, in every aspect of Israeli society, they're fully integrated. We saw that many of them did uh, join forces with Hamas in 2021. And, uh, you know, I think we're sitting on them pretty hard. Their leaders have said that they're not allowed to go in, but, you know, they're getting very incited on social media, and a lot of them are praising what Hamas did. So, yeah, it makes you, it's a, it's a source for concern. Well, one other trope um, I'd like you to address, because it's being bandied about, is the Al-Aqsa Mosque trope. That um, that this is uh, a defense of their uh, their their holy sites that are under assault or or could be under assault by the Israelis. Yeah, whatever. I mean, that's what, another one of their big lies because it's a jihad. So they're always trying to say that we're harming Allah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, I think unfairly Jews are barred from praying at the Temple Mount, which is where they built uh, Al-Aqsa and the ruins of uh, the Jewish Temple, which they, of course, pretend doesn't exist, and they've been going around for years trying to destroy all the antiquities underneath their mosque to blot out the historical record. But uh, Jews and Christians aren't allowed to pray there, and they're holy to both of us. And uh, so instead, we are we are allowed to, to go up and visit. And so every time that you have a large group of Jews going up to visit uh, the Temple Mount, which is the holiest site in, in Judaism, to have Hamas and the PLO and all of their all of their like-minded jihadists uh, throughout the Muslim world saying that we're endangering Al-Aqsa. I mean, it's all just part of the same thing of promoting jihad, uh, Islamic holy war, which calls for the obliteration of anybody in humanity, first and foremost, the Jews who are not Muslims. And uh, second of all, it's just part of their 
psychological warfare operations and political warfare operations against the Jewish state and its allies in the free world. Carol, anyway, I, I have to. I actually, yeah. they're calling me yeah. onto the set on television. Ca- I, I got to go. Sure, okay. Ca- Caroline. I hope Glick. I've been helpful today. Thanks oh, so yes. much for your time. Always. We appreciate it, Caroline. Okay. Glick. All right, bye bye. Thank you. And she joined us on our turnkey dot pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. It happens every year. Winter. Delivering and receiving supplies and getting people where they need to go can be impossible. Keeping your business doors and gates working properly to keep out the extreme weather is a major concern. Your business can't afford a loss of income or productivity. Think ahead this winter and call Industrial Door Company of Chicago, Inc. for your commercial door maintenance and security tune-up now. You can't always plan when your doors break down, and it always seems to come at the least convenient time.